All right, students just got done with your very first 2017 video, and it's an epic Q&A, viewer comments, rants, funny clips, everything you need in a video. So make sure you share it. Okay, let's get going. Here, Bob, take this. Also, make sure you watch to the very, very end of my videos because I usually add in bloopers, uh, additional clips, and stuff that didn't quite fit into the main video. So go check it out. Thanks for watching. Your very first video of 2017. Tell me what you think. There's more to come. Thumbs up, comment. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, students. I'm gonna do a Q&A with everybody or I'm gonna answer people's comments and questions that are on the site or that are under my videos. And then if there's an example that needs to be done, I'm gonna do the example. Okay, see you in a few. Hey, welcome students. Coach David Alexander here and today we are gonna do some viewer comments and I'll show you some examples. There's some compliments in here, there's some comments, and then of course there's some haters. So you're always gonna get that. All right, the first one is from, it's a video I did showing my little kid doing some BET stuff. So this person, Headhunter Combat Academy, this is just a week ago. We're only going about a week out. Oh yeah, it's just days that I've been punched in the groin by a four-year-old girl because I've tickled her. Anyways, do you recommend that type of training to younger people? Younger means under 18. I'm just wondering because I don't want to teach them useless BS, but I still don't want them to hurt or even kill classmates. Of course. All right, hold on. This is the problem with trying to get natural light. <laughs> you gotta deal with the noises, but it's okay. So do you wanna train kids by BET method, which is you know, a destroy all comers method? And the answer is, it's up to you. I train my kids at six and eight and a half. But I, of course, they're around me all the time and they realize, plus they were in my whole program, my MMA program, my Bullyproof program, they did the whole thing. So they knew that they were not allowed to use the excessive force on their schoolmates. It was only, and it was drummed into their head that it's only for kidnappers or bad adults in order to use those targets to escape kidnapping or bad adults. So it's up to you if you teach your kids, but it has to be drummed into them every day, all the time. And I'm not sure if I suggest that either because, well, you know, they ask, well, why daddy? Why do I have to hurt this adult? Don't I have to trust all adults, you know? And of course I say, no, I, I tell them the truth from day one. Well, maybe not day one. I had to tell them Santa Claus wasn't real early on because I couldn't handle that lie i couldn't lie to them saying oh be good santa claus no you'll shoot your eye out kid merry christmas ho 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 no! i don't want them bowing down to higher power. I want them to own themselves and respect people who deserve respect. Will that pay off in the end? I hope so. Okay, so thanks Headhunter Combat Academy for that question. Good question. Okay, this is from Emmanuel Briggs. And I'll say the name if the name's in your comments of your, your tagline, or I mean of your 
YouTube name is on there, not that you would write your name in your BFG 157, and then I would say BFG 157. But if you have your name as your thing, then I'm gonna say your name. Emmanuel Briggs. Hey coach, do you have any bare knuckle boxing for beginners tips or videos? Also, the liver shot video was great. So this is from my liver shot video. And I tell Emmanuel, I say, I would never bare knuckle box. I just wouldn't do it. Bare knuckle boxing, he's suggesting I'm gonna fight bare knuckles. In July 1889, the world heavyweight champion, John L. Sullivan, defended his title against the latest challenger to his crown. But this was not professional boxing as we know it. The protagonists fought with bare knuckles, and the fight itself was illegal, held in secret, deep in a Mississippi forest. Now, way back when, Boss Rutten and them, they wouldn't have gloves in UFC or the, the pride fighting. Well, I don't know, uh, some Japanese fighting. And they would use palm strikes. So yes, I would use palm strikes, but rarely did they punch with their fists because you break a knuckle. That's why it's called the boxer's fracture. They break a knuckle. Here you can see a person is hitting the skull or the head of another person breaking the neck of the fifth metacarpal bone. That break usually occurs at the base of the small finger and we call it the boxer's fracture. And then that hand's out of commission. You can't use it anymore. Hit somebody. So Boss Rutten would and I always bring up Boss Rudin because he's th the greatest, man. Man's man, tough as nails. Fought like a god. Okay. So he would faint, 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 and have somebody strike with their hand, and he would just duck their head and have them smash their hand on the top of his head, and that puts their hand out of commission. So now they don't have that hand to work with. And Boss would hit targets, very smart. And I have videos that show that. He would use that palm strike into the vagus nerve or behind the ear, the mastoid process back here and knock dudes out that way. Plus he had great kicks and great grappling, all that too. In a self-defense situation, you would never punch. You would never use your fists. And I have tons of videos that show that and show why. You would use palm strikes. You would use the targets. You wouldn't just punch because you're gonna break your hand and that hand's out of commission. And now if you have to fight two people or three people, and let's, let's say they have weapons, now you have one hand. No, no bare knuckle boxing. Unless you do it for a sport, then that's different. Find some other fools that'll bare knuckle box with you. But I appreciate the question, Emmanuel. Okay. Uh, Michael McClellan, one of my longtime subscribers. David, a downward, a downward eye rake into the eye sockets to bring his head down would probably be a good... Good one too, huh? So this is in response, what video is this? Uh, I can't remember. Okay, and I write, I don't like the eye rake. I would rather penetrate and move through the attacker. Okay, I would penetrate and move through the attacker. Let's say an eye rake. Okay, he wants me to, an eye rake, when an eye rake works, does an eye rake work on the sunglasses? No, but if I go through the attacker with my thumbs, I can get through these sunglasses, plus that exposes a groin strike. So maybe I don't get in his eyes right away, but my hands are going through his eyes, he's backing up, exposing the groin, and I'm gonna knee the groin. If I get him on the ground, then I'm gonna squish his eyes out, okay? So Mike, we don't wanna rake. So when I was in uh, learning from Tim Larkin, he told a story about these forensic guys would find uh, tissue under the fingernails of these dead women, okay? And then later, if they arrested the rapist murderer, they would find periorbital scratches, so scratches down their face. And the, and the, the forensics people, oh, they, they fought really hard. Okay, they might have fought hard, but they fought stupidly because they tried to scrape. They knew, oh, okay, go for the eyes, but they're scraping the face. There's no penetration there. If they would have went through the eyes, those women would be alive. I have no doubt in my mind because they were able to get to the face. So for some reason, 
as a human species, we don't go and penetrate the eyes. But you got to get over that if you want to live. In my Rape Proof program, I teach you how to get over that. I tell you all these stories about all these victims, and by the end of the stories, you're ready to frickin' kill some people. And you got to get in the right mental frame of mind to be able to survive. Okay, this is survival. So this is from Cut the Bullshit. <laughs> what a name. Great information. I hope people out there are learning from your videos. I hope so too. Do you also coach verbal confrontation and verbal de-escalation? He says drills. Maybe that's skills. Or no, he probably meant drills. Practicing verbal de-escalation. And the answer is yes, but only to kids. My verbal, my bullyproof program does tons of verbal de-escalation. Most of my self-defense stuff is after the fight's already happening. My BET stuff for sure. After the fight's happening, maybe you've already been knocked on the ground. Maybe you've already been stabbed. There's no verbal de-escalation after that. You have to survive. So you go into straight survival mode and you hit the three targets and then you survive. And then you go on to the next attacker and the next attacker and you kill them all. I'm from Buenos Aires and I say kill them all. Yeah! I've said many times, I have many programs, one's straight street fighting, kick everyone's ass, but they'll probably live. One is my, if you had a gun, would you pull the trigger, but you didn't have a gun? That's my BET, which is going to cause incapacitation, unconsciousness, or death. And then there's bullyproof and my MMA stuff, my sports stuff. So the de-escalation I use, so that's where I would do my index. Hey man, I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to bump you, you know, you bump somebody in a bar. Hey man, I didn't mean to bump you. And of course my index is my fighting position, right? My striking position, okay? Hey man, I didn't mean to bump you. That's, that's as far as de-escalation as I go. It's already happened, something's happened. And then of course I say, don't, I've said many times, don't be a drug dealer and don't go into where drug dealers are. The majority of murders are in the drug world. Just don't go around those situations. Don't stay out late at night. Don't go get drunk at the bars late at night and you won't have to worry about it. So that I think is a good enough answer. Cut the bullshit, thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, and this one was my Dimmock, the real Dimmock and I show the real Dimmock is somebody getting hit, somebody falling over, hitting their head on the concrete and dying, that's the real Dimmock. Let me tell you something, that Dimmock Magical bullshit is bullshit. It's bullshit. It doesn't work. Unless you hit the perfect target, but that's not what they're showing in Dimmock. You know, they're showing they hit you in the chest and then you, a week later, you die. Bullshit. I mean, it, it, maybe something's happened in the past that way. Somebody had a heart problem and some Japanese samurai hit him in the chest and a week later they died. And then he's like, wow, that was amazing. You know, all that fantasy, all this, people want to go train in Japan and get the real stuff. No, it's, it's bullshit, man. I mean, I've studied this stuff for years and years and years, thousands of hours of study, and I haven't found anything that proves that old mysticism is correct. Especially when the UFC came out and freaking skinny Brazilians started choking out every karate person. You know, they proved that their fighting system was superior in a fight. Now, I can't say kill systems out there. The ultimate martial art, and there's no art in a kill system. It's all martial. My stuff's all martial. There's no art. There's no katas. It's straight to the point stuff. I know I piss off a lot of martial artists because, and they're the ones that usually are the haters on my channel because I'm blowing their reality. Their reality is their mysticism is real, but I'm telling you, it's not. <laughs> Go fight a real fighter. Go fight Boss Rutten in a back alley and see how you do. It's not gonna go well. Now fight me? No, I'm not gonna fight. I'm gonna kill you or you're gonna kill me. So let's see who's better at killing. Okay, and that was from Sergeant Fitness Online. Thank you, Sergeant Fitness Online. SGT Fitness Online. 
Go check them out. And another guy said, what happened to the doctor? I think he went to prison. And another guy said, he's being, it's currently being fucked in the ass in prison. <laughs> That's probably true. So, I mean, if you strike and kill somebody, you're probably going to prison, even if it's self-defense. So be careful. You've got to know your state self-defense laws, and I've said that time and time before. Here's Emil. Emil's from Europe, and he's very secretive. He goes by Emil Thompson, but it's not his real name. So, All right, Emil. I think he's from, where are you from again? Croatia or Ukraine or something like that? And that could be a lie too, who knows? Not a lie, but he's protecting his identity, which I understand completely. I have a lot of military people that watch my stuff because they aren't taught this stuff. They're taught sport fighting for some reason. It's ridiculous. They go in a combat zone and you're gonna grapple some somebody? Come on, that's ridiculous. Let's show, it used to be the Department of War and now it's so political it's the Department of Defense where you just can defend yourself. But no, if you're not taking the person out, your attacker out, you gotta fight multiple attackers and nobody ever <laughs> ends the fight. You're just defending because it's politically correct. Oh my gosh. Okay, so where was I? Uh, politically correct. Yeah, if we have to, if we're in a, if we're occupying a country and we have to be politically correct, maybe we shouldn't be there, okay? Get them out, jeez. Okay, Emil, first I love your videos. I know that I said it before, but I'll say it again. You are getting better and better at making videos and editing them. This is the whole mini movie, plot and everything. Second, Whip Palm Strike is very similar to Face Smash Strike by Kelly McCann, both in hand configuration and ways of delivery. Similar, but not the same. Where was I? Oh yeah. Third point is the big thanks for that street fighting playlist that you put up on Coach. So sometimes, so at the end of my videos, I'll put a playlist. P.S. at 341 of the video, it looks a bit like that whale watching thing that people do, perhaps a little more active than that, perhaps. Many times it happens just by surprise Out in the world in front of your eyes You see a little kindness, someone who lends a hand I put up little clips and funny clips. My stuff's so serious that I lighten the mood with some fun. Okay, and I say, hey, Emil, thanks for the compliments as always. I mean, you always comp uh, comment and I appreciate it. And you bring up good points and good stuff. Thank you, Emil Thompson. Okay, what if, this is the karate chop one. What if someone has a gun to kill? What if someone has a gun to you, will it still work? This is Louis Villacana. And I say, for the karate chop. Now, that's my street fighting system. If they have a gun to you or a knife, you're gonna use my BET, BET system. It goes to my head. I'm here and I'm just gonna rotate and penetrate into him. Boom, and once I hit the eyes with my thumbs. The and you're not gonna mess around with uh, a karate chop. You're gonna move your thumbs through their eyes and and then cause a somatic reflex and get to the next target, next target. The gun will fall away as long as you don't get shot. But there's no guarantee. Now I do teach some gun disarms. I guess the bad guy. Boom, look at that. Weapon disarm. That's how easy it is. And then boom, 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 I start shooting them. But it's all just for fun because I would never do that. If somebody had a gun to my head, I'm going through them pass the gun into the target and I hope I don't get shot. If you have to learn 50 different gun disarms in all these different situations, go, go on my channel and type gun disarm and then you'll see what I mean. And I'll probably do an updated one too. But no, I would go through, I would stick my fingers in their eyes, go through them. And I can pick up the gun later and who knows if the gun even works. It might not even be loaded. It might malfunction. You never know. Okay, so that was Louis Villacana. Thanks, Louis. Hi, Coach. Could you please make a video on how to block haymakers and hooks like the technical ones from boxing? There isn't much about it out there. Let's, let's do that right now. Okay, haymakers, hooks, technical ones. So this is a haymaker. It comes over the top, right? That's what he's talking about. Boom, haymaker. So, and that assumes 
you're in a fight. If, they're, if I'm in a life or death situation, where if I'm in a fight, I assume I'm in a life or death situation, and they start throwing a haymaker, I'm moving forward. They start throwing a haymaker, I'm moving forward and through them. I'm going to get inside that haymaker and start striking my targets. Now, in a just straight self-defense or sport-wise, I'm going to use what's called my number one block. Boom, number one block. See that? So how is that? So they come with a haymaker. I'm in my number one block. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If they throw a haymaker, I'm one block. And then I have room to throw a, set, a shot, right? One block, and then I can take him down and grapple him if I want to. So that's a sport. In a street fight, life or death situation, I'm going for targets. I'd love for them to throw haymakers. Absolutely. Look at how much room. You ready? So I want you to time you coming in on me. So did you do it? We don't want space in a fight. I want to be right up in your grill. Right? That's where I want to be. I can get to your targets that way. If I'm out here, then I got to fight you. I'm going to get tired. His buddy comes gonna, is going to come over. And then I have to sport fight two people, and I'm going to get my ass kicked. And an ass kick can mean life or death. Haymaker, I want to go inside the haymaker. Okay? Or in a sport, I want one block. One block, look at where I'm putting my hand. Okay? I'm leaning in and I'm covering my vital targets on my one block. Two block. I'm not out here one block, right? It's tight and it's tight against me. So I can take the impact of that shot and it's not going to rattle me. One, right? One block. Then I can come with my shot. And then another guy, James Nevitt. Coach David, you are better than Tim Larkin. Man. That's the best compliment I could ever get. But, no, I learned from Tim. Uh, I'm not better than Tim Larkin, but thank you very much. Now, I think my system is easier to learn than Tim's, but, and that's, that's how it developed. I learned Tim's system, not the whole thing, of course, just what I needed out of it. Over the years, I whittled it down to these three targets, BET, so you just react and it's quicker to learn, quicker to execute. So I just think mine's easier, but I would never know it without Tim. The guy's a genius. Him and his Chris Rink were geniuses. Uh, who's that? I already said that. Uh, another question. Alexander Smith, should you always be striking in combos, even if it's not elbow strikes? This was an elbow strike video. Uh, yes, if you can. Each strike should open a new target to strike. Keep in mind that you must move forward into the attack for best results. So he's, a lot of people are stuck in this sport, street fighting mind. Sport fighting. I'm going to hit one, two combo, one, two hook, right? Uppercut. And they're street fighting. Okay? Now, it would probably work in a street fight, but you really... Don't want to be punching with your hands, like I said before, because they'll break. Call it the boxer's fracture. You want to be moving through targets. You want to be striking targets. You don't want to worry about these awesome techniques that you need to perfect in a sport over years and years and years and years and years. What I teach you can learn in five minutes, okay? The target, moving through the target, moving your body weight through a target. And that's why you come to my channel, I would imagine, because I teach something totally different out there. Totally different than all the other people. Now, I do teach some techniques, just because if I just taught you my BET stuff, we'd be done in two hours and I wouldn't have a channel anymore. And that's probably why martial arts has a thousand techniques, because you've got to learn for 10 years to get your black belt, even though you use maybe 10 of those techniques, if you were ever in a fight. Okay, and the Gracie said that too. Well, we have a thousand techniques, but we basically use 12 over and over and over, but we just know those 12 better than most, and that's absolutely true. So how to kill with your hands, 
the attention getter, okay, to survive a violent attack on yourself or your family, okay? It's a way to survive. I don't teach how to kill just to kill. And that's why he says, let me read. So obviously this guy knows nothing about me, but he took the time to type this big, long paragraph to say how immoral and absurd I am. It says on the wall, how to kill with your hands. Absurd and shameful motive to learn how to fight. People with morals should learn how not to kill with their hands, but use their hands to defend themselves. And if you're defending, you're losing and you're going to die. Sorry, buddy. This is out of the box seven. And obviously you only think in the box seven. Okay. How to not kill with their hands, to use their hands to defend themselves. A whole different motive and philosophy towards life and even death. My whole thing's about philosophy. It's philosophy of survival. I will never get into a fight unless I need to take out the attacker that is trying to kill me, my family, or whoever. Okay? Uh, why kill when you can learn for the worst case scenario? That's what I teach. Worst case scenario stuff. To maim someone effectively? No, you can't maim somebody effectively. You can't, if you're in a real life or death situation, you you're not going to be able to just strike a little bit, okay? You got to fully commit. If you had a gun, would you, would you pull that trigger to save yourself and your family? Would you pull that trigger? You don't shoot legs, okay? You shoot torso and head. You have to kill the attacker. Otherwise, they're going to kill you. This person doesn't understand life or death situations. Uh, answer. Ignorance, hate, vengeance, ego issues, immorality. A society taught life and morals from TV, internet, movies. Hey, I appreciate your comment, you know, because it, it makes me realize that there's so many people out there that don't understand what real self-defense is. Real life or death situations. All you see is sport fighting, probably, is my guess. But, hey, I appreciate it. And then, uh, Joe Wing. Hi, just a quickie. What is BET? I don't tell people what BET is. You can find out in my videos. But, unless it's obvious that you haven't bought my video or my online program. So, that's usually how people find out about BET. So Joe, go buy it, man. Go to selfdefensemadereeleasy.com or howtokillwithyourhands.com. And then I like this one. This is Bubbling Gamer Bee's Friend Hey Ya. I don't know what the hell that is. And then one of, I get all the time because I use Bob all the time. What if my opponent has arms? What do I do then? So they're trying to be funny. It's probably some 12-year-old, you know, typing on their computer. Bob all, Bob's all country western today. He's gonna go boot scooting, boot scooting boogieing. But yeah, if Bob ever grew arms, I'd be in real shit because he'd be one pissed off piece of rubber because of all the abuse he's taken over the years. All right, well thanks, bubbling gamer bees friend, hey ya. Right. So, students, it was a long one. I gotta refocus, keep wanting to focus on Bob. I'm the star, not Bob. Or is Bob the star? Maybe Bob's the star. Okay. So I appreciate you watching, man. Thanks a lot. I need you to hit the like button. It keeps me motivated to make more videos. Uh, comment. Tell me you like it. Tell me you hate it. Just get involved. And then I need you to subscribe. And I appreciate it. Okay. Ready? Coach David, out! One, two, three. So that's like a three parry, or I'm grabbing their hand. Four, right? Left hand, right hand. The one is my left side, the odd numbers. 
the even side is my right. One, two, three, four, five is a double block to the right. Keep it tight, don't go out. Five, six is a double block to the right. Five is a double block to the left. Six, seven is a block to my face while I'm blocking down here. These are sport blocks, okay? In a real life or death situation, you're not blocking, you're just attacking. Seven, eight, nine, your elbow goes to your leg. I can't really show. My foot goes down and I'm blocking like a tie block. 10, nine, 10. Okay? <laughs> 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 Myself. <laughs> right? Okay. Okay, let's. Oh, it's recording. Here. Do it again. <laughs> Subscribe right here. Yeah. Watch the next video. Yeah. And hit the like button. Okay. But don't talk. <laughs> I got. Oh, I didn't know you were going. I didn't know it was rolling. Okay. okay.